Hi guys, Squall here and welcome to the fourth and final part of my two days at Scania videos. Now, most of the footage that you've seen was taken from the first day I spent at Scania where I was mostly up at the demo center driving around. At the start of that first day, the drivers of the Young European Truck Driver Competition assembled in the main hall along with their supporters and press. Scania then explained the competition itself, uh, why it was held, the benefits of the competition, what the prizes would be. And then at the end of it, basically all the names of the drivers were put into a big pot that you can see that glass bowl there. And they were drawn out to group the drivers together so that they would compete in the various heats. The drivers then went away to do the first part of the competition, which is a non-driving part of the competition. It centers around first aid and safety and secure securing of cargo, that kind of thing. So while they were away doing that, I had a quick look around the Scania shop. Now, basically, around the Scania shop, you can see they've got this wonderful Scania truck fish tank, which I would dearly love to have. On the way out, you could see the trophies from the competition itself. And then outside was the, um, the prize, the grand prize, which the winner um, of the competition would get, which is a 100,000 euro Scania truck. Day two started bright and early for myself and Pavel Sabor. We headed down to the chassis porton, which is a Scania um, chassis assembly plant. In the grounds outside, there were some very old trucks like this one here, the Scania Varbis. There was also some part assembled vehicles. I think they're buses and coaches off to be uh, have their body assembled on top of them. There were some wonderful painted trucks like this one here. Very nice looking, but one of my favorites and the crowd's favorite, I think, was this one absolute beautiful chimera paint skin lowered just race spec look at just look at the details it's incredible the wheels race tires on it i can't remember how many turbos it had on this thing i think it was something like six or eight possibly eight turbos i think it was six turbos on it and also finally i got myself a photo next to the giant inflatable michelin man but then it was time to head inside the chassis port in itself so the entrance to the chassis porton is here and like any production line it generally starts with pallets of components you name it it's all here from struts to members to chassis um, to widgets to whatever it's all in there all made to order chassis uh, scania actually gave us a uh, a talk a seminar and they explained how they'd streamlined the logistics operations so everything now is brought in pretty much just in time as it's needed with minimal kind of uh, routing in between the different factories. This is how it starts. It starts with the basic chassis on, uh, on sat on a trolley and this thing is going to move all the way through the plant until it ends up as the finished article. The guys in the factory work in teams. Here you can see a team. This team will be responsible for a particular part of the production of this truck. Trucks are built to a specification. The chassis moves with that specification and this team will basically fulfill that part list onto that chassis. The chassis will then move on and another truck will come in. Here you can see some of the drive axles. These will be assembled onto the chassis by a particular team. Also going with these drive axles are the engines. Now the engines are not assembled at the plant. They're assembled at the engine assembly plant, which is nearby. It's very close to the chassis factory. And I wanted to go and visit the engine assembly plant and get some footage. But unfortunately, I just didn't get time. But I think you'll agree, looking at these things, they come in all different shapes and sizes, all the variety of Scania engines, but uh, they all look so neat and tidy. Now here you can see a chassis just being hoisted away. It's been lifted off of its... Um, uh, trolley. The reason for that is because the underside is about to be fitted. There you can see the axles have been mounted. And on the left here, you're going to see a chassis being brought in and the drive axle, the drive shaft and rear axle here is about to be mounted. Now just watch these guys as they fit it. One of my particular favorite things here is a guy who gets on a, a wheelie chair, like a standard office wheelie chair, and he kind of zips around just bolting things together. It's fun to watch.
Once the drive shaft and the axles are fitted, the truck looks something like this. Already you can see it starting to take shape. All that remains is for a guy to uh, tighten up some bolts. And a lower cab is put on. And then another guy turns up. And he shines a torch on the inside. Now one of my favourite bits. Just on the right there you can see that the uh, crowd was stopped with a little traffic light system. And this is where this crane basically hoists the upper cab over to the assembled chassis and lowers it down on top. This guy is about to uh, stay on the inside of the truck while the upper cab is lowered down on top of him. And if you look very carefully, you can just about see the mounting points between the cab and the actual chassis itself. With the mounting secure, he tightens up the bolts and it's starting to look like a truck. Around the front of the truck, the same guy then helps to wire in the various systems. The top of the cab has now been connected to the uh, chassis and the engine. So now all of the electrical systems and air conditioning systems and control units are all wired together. Here we can see various shapes and sizes of fuel tank. And these are mounted onto the truck. And here is a 4x2 with its side tank being mounted. And we can't have a truck without wheels. So here are the wheels. Now, they've got specialist machinery to help mount each wheel onto the truck. You can see it there. It's basically a system that tightens up five bolts in one turn. It also has some built-in lighting so that the operator can see what's going on. And basically the truck moved forward through the production line. The wheels are then put onto this machine. And as the truck gets into position, the wheel is put onto the truck. And then this machine is moved into position onto the nuts, lined up, pushed in. And it just automatically tightens them all to the correct tension. The guy then gives it a rotation and then tightens up the remaining bolts. The truck then moves on to testing. This lady here was testing the uh, engine startup and the electrical systems just to make sure that everything's okay. And here we have some of the finished articles. These are painted units ready for the customer to drive away. And that is how Scania assembles a truck. After I'd finished at the chassis factory, I walked over to the Eurotruck Simulator 2 tent. This was situated some 40 meters away from the Young European Truck Driver Competition area. Now, this tent had been set up by Wendros. Wendros are a company that sell games and they'd very kindly agreed uh, to set up this tent area complete with four computers. Now the four computers were linked up to four big screens and Logitech had very kindly provided Logitech G27s, they provided five of them in total. Four of them were hooked up to the four computers and that allowed anybody who came over to the tent to drive Euro Truck Simulator 2, which was absolutely fantastic. And uh, also a, a computer had been set up for me. This was uh, Killian's computer. Remember Killian? Killian was the guy, one of my followers, who contacted me a year ago about this potential trip. So he brought his computer over. I plugged in my track IR and a Logitech G27, and I drove on the big screen. However, before I was due to drive Euro Truck Simulator 2 on the big screen, I'd arranged to do a little fan meetup with Pavel Sabor. 
Now, this is where it turned entirely unexpected. I was expecting maybe a dozen, 20 at most fans to turn up and uh, greet me, sort of, you know, fans of the YouTube or Twitch channels. But nothing, nothing prepared me for what happened that day. I basically stood there and I met fans from my channel for two hours straight. Two hours I greeted fans. I, I was absolutely blown away. In a good way. Absolutely blown away. I was asking people, where did you come from? And they were saying, oh, you're just the other side of uh, Stockholm, not far, came down on my motorbike. Okay, where do you come from? Oh, I came from uh, Gothenburg. Oh, wow, okay. That was a bit of a trip. Yeah. Uh, where did you come from? I came from Ireland. What? Where did you come from? I came from Austria, Germany. They came from everywhere just to meet me and be here. And it was the most incredible experience. But not only that. There was people who turned up, there was a guy in a wheelchair, bless him, and he got out of his wheelchair to have a photo taken with me. And let me tell you, that is a pretty humbling experience. If you was one of the fans that I met that day, then from the bottom of my heart, I just want to thank you for turning up and making that special for everybody. That was incredible. Thank you so much. Pavel and I basically met a load of fans and I then got on with driving some Euro Truck Simulator 2 on the big screen in front of passers-by and it was very special because a lot of my fans were still there around me while I did this and it was basically like I was playing Euro Truck Simulator 2 except they were sat right next to me doing it it was in the cab as close as it can possibly be it was an incredible experience this was before the release of Scandinavia DLC and Pavel Sabor had turned up with a copy of the Scandinavia DLC, the latest build of it, pre-release stuff, and anybody that was at the tent that day could basically sit down with a Logitech G27 wheel and play Euro Truck Simulator 2 with the Scandinavia DLC. It was a special moment. I sat down on my computer and I basically drove around a Scania factory in-game and people could see on the big screen that the chassis porton in the game looked pretty realistic compared to the chassis porton that they were at. And uh, that was a special moment. Additionally, anybody that turned up and drove uh, Euro Truck Simulator 2 could put their name and number into a hat to win a G27. At the end of the session, at the end of the day, we then put all the names and numbers in a big hat and I drew them out one by one. And those lucky five people won themselves a Logitech G27, courtesy of Logitech. And as for the Young European Truck Driver competition, sadly, I didn't get to see much of it. I did see the very, very end when we'd finished in the tent, where Lars Sondergaard from Denmark won the competition. Congratulations to him. As for my trip, I had an incredible journey, an incredible experience. Definitely ranks as one of my top five things I've ever done in my life. I recorded as much footage as I could for you guys, these four videos have been some of the most intensive editing I've ever had to do for any of my videos, but I hope it's given you a behind the scenes look at Scania itself and what it's like to actually drive a truck. It was incredible to meet all of the fans. It was wonderful to meet Scania. There are many people to thank, but it remains for me to say, guys, until the next video, happy trucking. Oh,